Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on this Tuesday. And man, uh, it's almost here. I think we hit 100 degrees yesterday. Uh, you can feel it like in the morning. It, it's, you know, 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. It's it's already, you know, high 60s up into maybe the, the low 70s. It won't be long where... Uh, yeah, it'll be like 94 at 5 a.m. and 114 at 5 p.m. But get out there while you still can. While it's still uh, well, a little bit uh, decent out here. Uh, this is the, the the tough months coming up here in the Valley of the Sun. Our toll free number 800 951 Of course, the website at allamericangold.com. We told you yesterday we try to help. We try to help, Jason. We thought that uh, gold really had a good setup yesterday, closing the gap that was left on Friday. Uh, Gold's up uh, about $16, just right bumping up on $2,360. Silver, good day today. And silver, uh, silver's up another 30 cents. And watch out, here comes copper. Uh, Jason was doing some math earlier today. Uh, Those, you know, we had copper in the penny t- through 1982. Right? So after that, they're like, "Oh, wait a minute! You know that that's copper's too expensive. Let's let's put you know slag in there, whatever." They, I don't even know what they make it with now. Uh, but if you have uh, 1982 or older pennies, Jason, you said they're over three cents now, just in just in copper. Um, yeah, the fade, the uh, three times face value. I mean, in the 1960s, when they pulled the silver, you couldn't get that type type of face value. Uh, so, you do. It's just it's just the whole the, the, the tough thing about copper is you have to have so much of it. So you have to be really bulldog. You have to be really excited about it. But yeah, yeah if you plunk those copper pennies into a jar eventually, and when they demonetize the penny, I mean, uh, Canada demonetized the penny in 2013. They haven't had pennies in Canada for 11 years, and uh, when they do that. You can take it over to the uh, you know, wherever you want to recycle copper and just melt them. And uh, where else can you give somebody something and they give you something back that's three times value? Where, where do you can you get that deal? Yeah, this is a, a, another big, big move uh, to the upside here in, in these metals. And, and, of course, we've been telling you this all along. You know, yesterday we talked about, you know, Goldman Sachs said, hey, wait a minute. This math doesn't work. Right, we're, we're we're looking at central bank purchases, at least what they said. Uh, we're looking at what all the big jewelers, you know, what what they buy. We're, we we know what the mints are buying and, and the refiners, you know, the companies that are making you know gold bars or whatever they maybe they go. Listen, we know all that stuff, and when we add it up, there's a lot of gold that got bought that we don't know who bought it. Right, and they're like, "Hey, listen, there's only there's only one place, right? And that would be central banks. Why? Because they don't have to disclose if they don't want to. And of course, I think really what it, it is is they're starting to look at these inventories, and and it's getting scarce. You know, when you think about uh, what Goldman said, hey, our base case. That's if everything goes perfectly. You're going to see twenty seven hundred dollar gold before the end of the year, and then they threw out a two different scenarios that they said, listen, both of these are very possible. And they were talking about $3,100 gold by the end of the year. You got silver, right? Silver bumping up on 20. I, I said this at, at the beginning, we're going to see 30 plus dollar silver. And, and, and if you just do, let, let, let's just keep it simple. Let, let's just say 3000 because I'm too lazy to do anything else. Right now, silver, there's like 83 ounces uh, of silver right now to gold right now. That would put silver at 36. I mean, Jason, they look really, really attractive. Both gold and silver look very attractive right now. You know, one thing I'm thinking about, Joe, that could make gold really go bonkers is uh, it's a little bit of a shell game as far as gold storage. You know, how many of these guys are storing it? actually have what they have i mean we sell gold iras you know and, and we, we try to do the best we can to help people out with that but you know 
how many how much of this buying of gold is like well we'll hold it here just keep on buying it we got plenty i mean why why move it why ship it you know we'll, we'll just leave it here we'll just charge you a little fee and well, what's going to happen if you know like a shell game you have the three shells you have the, the ball under one of those shells and they mix it all up and it's like well which which one is your gold stored at is, is yours in the empty one and what if that happens joe that it's, it's basically a bank run you know gold is actually money and if someone says they are, they're holding the gold they don't have it we could be looking at that all this buying who knows this central bank says they have this much and this central bank says they have that much well if they don't physically have it in their in their holdings then how many of these central banks are going to come up short when it comes time to take possession so gold and silver might find you you have to take possession at least at least of a, of a certain percentage of it if you don't want to store it in your in your possession but that's the only way to really do it joe yeah, eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. So everyone's gonna wait for tomorrow CPI. I, I'll tell you this: I know, you, you know what Goldman said and Morgan Stanley said that hey, don't be shocked if we get a lower year-over-year -year inflation number, mostly because of the way they do math, right? And and with housing that that really doesn't even isn't even indicative. Uh, of what the real markets are. Matter of fact, rents went up for the third straight month in a row. This, they j it just came out this morning, right? But, oh, well, you know, somehow uh, the Fed's allegedly going to, you know, mass that over. But today we got producer prices. And I'm just going to tell you right now, nobody should be shocked by this. Jason, red hot producer prices, uh, the hottest producer prices in a year so you gotta go all the way back to january of or i'm sorry what is it may of last year to find a number this hot yeah i don't know i, I don't care what the fed says the place is not going anywhere nine five one zero five nine two joe and jason patriot news hour on this tuesday quick look in at the market the dow's up 40 points uh, the NASDAQ is up 70. The s and is up 9. The 10-year note, uh, we'll see how this works. It almost looks like, and of course we get CPI tomorrow, it almost looks like, hey, you guys want to get out of your short positions on the 10-year note uh, with that red-hot producer prices. But right now, the 10-year note's at 446. When that producer price came out, it shot up to like 452 Back down here, we'll see uh, how this plays out. Crude oil uh, lower today. Like we said, we talked about gold and silver uh, red hot today. Once again, the Japanese yen struggling again. And, uh, and I'll just say this. As you guys know, you need to be more diversified than ever before because we're, we're, we're in this bubble. You know we're in the bubble. I know we're in the bubble. Uh, Jason and I are going to talk about, listen, next month, things start changing again, right? The government runs out of all the money that came in on April 15th, right? The, the reverse repo, there's nothing in there, right? There's, you know, a piddling left in that thing. And here comes the debt wave again. The next debt wave comes and and again, it's all about right. Well, gosh, can the can somehow they just cut a quarter of a point, and everything's going to be fine? Yeah, no, no, it's not happening. Uh, I, you know, demand destruction may be happening. We'll talk about that in a minute. But getting yourself diversified, you got to have that gold and silver. You got to have it. You know, if you like Jason was talking about, listen, if you have it in a, uh, an IRA or an old 401k, put some of it into gold. We can help you do that. Check out why refi. We, we can, you know, 10 and a quarter percent fixed for five years. I mean, that's huge. You don't got to do one year, six and a half. Those are pretty darn good returns. Right, you know, ten and a quarter percent. Hey, you're gonna at least beat it. Well, at least the inflation they say is inflation. You at least beat that, and it's not correlated to Wall Street. I'm telling you, there's not. It, listen, I don't know if it's 
three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, but this thing is going to pop for sure, and you want to be out of it before that happens. Check them out, investyrefi.com. you got to have at least 50000 but check them out. There's no fees. They don't play games. There's no attack on principle if you need your money back early. 888-Y-REFI-24. Now, Jason, when you see things like we're going to talk about next, this is when you start to get worried. Red Lobster. Now, we talked about Red Lobster a few weeks ago saying, hey, you know what? Bankruptcy may be in their future. This morning, 80 locations in at least 27 states are closed effective immediately. Uh, They were giving, workers were giving no notice. In other words, uh, the workers showed up and Jason There's a sign on the door. Uh, We're we're close. And and, uh, apparently, two things have happened. Number one, a liquidation company has started auctioning off all of the equipment that's in these 80 locations. So this is, listen, this isn't temporarily closed, going to reopen, you know, in a couple of weeks. No, this is. We need money, and we're out of business. By the way, the union, who is the major supplier to Red Lobster, has severed ties with the chain. So uh, that tells me, Jason, there's only one reason why you sever ties when you're the supplier. They're not paying us, right? I mean, that, that's, that's pretty simple what's happening at Red Lobster right now. It's not a very cheap... Uh fair to be eating anyways i mean it's it's uh, it's it's, a little, it's definitely more of a uh, luxury type of food right joe this is not mcdonald's we're talking about with higher prices this is crab and lobster and seafood which is a lot or uh, a lot more expensive to get onto your your dinner plate and uh the, we talked about red lobster for years about how they've been you know just barely hanging on it seems like they're 10 years overdue for going out of business with uh, how hard it is to run a place like that. i mean what other seafood places are out there, Joe? Except for places that maybe they gave you a little shrimp, but there's really nothing out there, is there? Yeah, it's uh, and again, when you it, that's just not how you do it. You know, this is a, they had 650 stores. I mean, this is this is a big deal, right? And and it, yeah. you know, you you don't lock your workers out. And oh, by the way, here comes the liquidators, right? We're gonna sell everything that isn't bolted down, and even stuff that is bolted down. And then your top supplier says, "Hey, by the way, we're done doing business with you." Uh, we'll see what happens here. Um, obviously, uh, there's it, for sure going to be a bankruptcy. Let's see. Is it going to be a total liquidation? We don't know yet. Home Depot said, hey, traffic's a little light, right? You know, it's, it, it's the consumer slowing down today that, that uh, you know, Home Depot, well, they got different priorities, high interest rates. Home Depot is blaming that as a reason why uh, consumers – you know, they're not doing the projects, right? They're not remodeling. They're not taking out the loan to remodel or whatever it may be. Or the, the flippers, right, aren't flipping houses because uh, interest rates are high. But, uh, Jason, just another one of these signs. How can you have a home improvement project when you can't even buy the house to begin with? <laughs> you got to have the home before you can improve it. And uh, Home Depot having soft sales, if this continues, which I, I, I would say that it will probably continue, then uh, this will now reflect on home sales uh, very quickly behind it, Joe. Yeah, and, and uh, then there's this uh, report out, uh, not only Red Lobster, now TJA Fridays is another one they're saying uh, that Moody's is saying uh, may be headed for the bankruptcy f- filings and uh, saying that they're stressed, what they're calling the fast casual dining. Uh, that there's major foot traffic problems. Uh, and all of a sudden, so uh, again, a lot of these companies, hey, a 5% drop is enough to put them into bankruptcy, Jason. And, and, and some of these places are saying, hey, it's not 5%. We got 10% drops literally in just the last 30 days. Yeah, well, I mean, eating out is has become more and more expensive, more and more expensive. We've covered this uh, many times, Joe. And so, I, 
uh, how many restaurants are going to follow this, Joe? You know? I mean, it's uh, the choices of where to go out to eat are going to are going to uh, get confined to less and less choices, Joe. You know? I just uh, and and you know, when the fast food is getting too expensive, uh, how can casual fast dining be any better? I right, sit down yeah. restaurants. I think we're actually doing better than I thought, but they're 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 going to be following this. I, I'm just you know, it's funny when McDonald's is trying to figure out. Hey, how can we get a five dollar meal, right? And they and, and they're having a hard time doing it, right? They they're like, the the math just doesn't work, right? With 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 all of these things. And then April's producer prices came out today up half of a percent month over month. Uh, you know, you do some quick math there. That puts inflation at six percent. If it did that every month, much hotter than expected they were expecting a three tenths of a percent rise month over month the highest year over year reading since april of last year the fourth hotter than expected ppi print in a row so it was hotter in january it was hotter in february it's hotter in march April now, the hottest one yet. So, Jason, it's actually ramping up on the producers. Inflation, inflation, inflation just doesn't stop, Joe. I mean, obviously, if things cost uh, reasonably and the prices weren't going up, and and how about this? How many of these uh, ailing companies and restaurants would try to stick it out if they thought for any reason, well, maybe this will finally slow down the prices will stop going up? If there was any reason to believe that, some of these places would probably try try to uh, try to stick it out, right, Joe? But Red Lobster, they've got to believe the prices are going to keep going up. So it's like, well, it's time to give it up. And uh, there's going to be a lot more of this. There's going to be a lot more of this coming up. I mean, at some point, you have to de- uh, declare defeat and, and move. Because, uh, you know, Joe, how many businesses have tried to linger on, linger on, linger on, and you end up getting a worse result on the, on the backside of it? Yeah, and then uh... – well, uh, the Martins Wall Street on parade delinquencies of office property loans at banks has now hit eight percent. Okay, so that this is office property, commercial office property, now at eight percent, which is alarming to begin with. But here's what's interesting: the Martins did some digging, and they found out that the office real estate properties that the banks sold to investors show 31% are in trouble. So the banks are like, well, the loans we kept, there's only an 8% problem. The ones we sold all of you guys, there's a 31% problem. And I know, listen, right? Buyer beware, right? I, I, I guess, right? But Jason, that's that's kind of messed up, isn't it, right? You're taking the bank's word for it, right? They're selling all of these uh, these uh, loans and packaging them all up, and the ones they keep has an 8% problem, which is huge. But the Martins went in and said, hey, guess what they what they did to the investor? 31% of them got problems. And, and, and I think the 31% is just to cover up their 8%. You know, when the housing crash happened and destroyed the economy of the entire world for a while, mortgage-backed securities had just hit 8% failure, and, and, and you had economic apocalypse going on. So they're, they're admitting to their 8%, but what they're trying to do is, hey, well, look, don't look at my left hand and my 8%, which that's the same percentage of economic apocalypse. Look at the 31% of the guys that we – look at the suckers we, we threw this stuff on. They want you to look at that. But never mind that eight percent is eight percent is a huge number. A lot of people are like eight percent. You know, well, eight percent of a million dollars—you got yourself eighty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, it's a huge it's a number. That eight percent is number. huge, and they want you to look at all the stuff that's that. They, oh, look how good we were. Look how smart we were. We got rid of thirty-one percent failures that we we, we unloaded to some other poor sucker. But look at their eight percent, Joe. The thirty-one is just big. The eight percent. What if that turns to ten? What if that turns to twelve? So why are we saying, you know, and this has been a slow-moving crash, but like I said, the next six months, it's, it's huge, the amount of these that come up, right? They're, they're the end of their, their arm is coming up in the next six months, and then they got stu- they're stuck with these balloon payments, which nobody's going to make. A year ago, 
it was at 16%. So it's essentially doubled. The problem has doubled. We haven't heard that much about it, but the problem has doubled. But listen to this. The Martins are saying places like Chicago, 75% of all office building commercial loans are in trouble. How about Denver? 65% of these in Denver are in trouble, right? Jason, this thing is, it's almost, you know, it's not everywhere, but almost everywhere. Sure has echoes of uh, the 08 crash and, and how bad that got. I mean, really... You've said it about a billion times, Joe. But if 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 this goes where it looks like it's headed, which is which which is markets uh, starting to show this, you know, the collapse and signs of collapse and, and crashing, and then you have like Red Lobster, you know, going nationwide, everyone's laying off, laying off. The job losses. Well, then then maybe the inflation slows or stops. And I don't know, Joe. Why do, I, yeah, why, right. do the, why do I get the feeling that we have the inflation and we have job losses? Why do I get the feeling this inflation is severe enough that job losses aren't going to do it? You know what? It's going to take a lot of losses to stop it. You're right about that. Remember Starwood Capital. Hey, there's going to be a bank or two a week failing here uh, in, in, the, in the immediate future. Uh, and, and now you can kind of see why. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason here on this Tuesday. Jay Powell's talking overseas in Amsterdam, uh, one of those foreign banking conventions, some of the highlights. We didn't expect this to be a smooth road, he said, but these inflation readings are higher than I think anyone expected. Huh. Interesting. So you're telling me that uh, nobody at the Fed saw uh, any of the this inflation, you know, and again, same old thing, right? What that has told us is we're going to be, we're going to need to be patient. I don't think it's really a question of keeping policy at the current rate for longer than what had been thought, right? So saying, hey, listen, man, we didn't see it. We thought we were going to be cutting rates already, not going to be able to, which is going to cause a lot of problems, especially, you know, we just started talking about all these delinquencies in the office space. Here was something, though, that I thought was really interesting. So somebody must have asked, hey, guys, um, you know, you say you want 2% inflation. He bragged about it. I was actually listening to him talk before we got on the air. His opening remarks, he talked about how great the U.S. job market is. Right? So he's got a dual mandate, full employment, which we just told you it was great. 2% inflation. Right? And we didn't give you the 2%. You told us that it was 2%. Right? That's what you guys picked. And now you're sitting there saying, oh, my gosh, we just, wow, man, we were caught off guard. We didn't see it. So somebody must ask, are you going to raise rates? I mean, because isn't that what you're supposed to do, right? I mean, according to your mandate, well, here's what he said. I don't think that it's likely Based on the data we have, there's that word again, based on the data we have, that the next move we make would be a rate hike. I don't think that's likely. I think it's more likely that we'll be at a place where we hold the policy rate where it is. So I guess according to Jay Powell in his speech Uh, at the foreign banking in Amsterdam today saying that, listen, we're not going to raise, we're done fighting the inflation. We've fought it as hard as we could. We're going to give up there. But Jason, no indication that there's going to be a rate cut uh, anytime soon anyway. 
No, there really shouldn't be anyways. You know, when you got the inflation running uh, and, and prices going up steadily uh, month after month, uh, the the key factor to keep it down is to raise the interest rates to, to cool the inflation. So there really shouldn't. I, there's still this piece of me, Joe, that they get enough, you know, red lobster information out there that they'll try to lower the rate sometime before the election. You won't even believe this. It'll be a Democrat. It'll be sitting there saying, Look, the, the the Dow is at the highest record level ever because of the irrational exuberance of buying on the one quarter point rate reduction. I can see it now, Joe, and I don't think it's going to win an election for the guy. I just, I just, it's just it's usually that's what the Republican brags about, right? It's uh, right, got a backwards right. world. Got a backwards well, world I'm, going on, and it could happen, Joe. He did put. He did put, kind of a time limit on it. Said that they'll need another quarter's worth of data before they can make a decision. So uh, that that puts us where? That puts us right into summer, right? That puts us June, yep. July, right? Hey, we, we're going to need, you know, May, June, July. We're going to need that data before we can commit to telling you when we're going to cut rates. And, Jason, I'm going to tell you right now, I think you may be right. Because if, 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 if they're serious that they're not going to lower rates and they're going to wait another three months, I think you're going to start seeing a lot more bankruptcies, a lot more hardship, yep. and you're going to start seeing banks go under. That's just what's going to happen. And I believe they're going to want uh, up to the November election, try to show uh, as rosy of a picture about the economy as they possibly can. And uh, that... I mean, look at all the uh, the Wall Streeters, man. They are thirsty. They're almost bleeding to get a, a rate reduction, and just throwing them the bone of a quarter point. Can you imagine all all the the ridiculous overbuying that's going to go into the markets just on that? Right. One? Oh, well, they, oh, they yeah. lowered it one quarter point, then they're going to lower it another one, then they're going to lower. It. That's right. And what will happen exactly is, that, right? and what will happen is after the election, the the inflation will come roaring back up really? like like a bomb, and, uh, and and it doesn't matter who's elected; those rates will go right back up. They'll go right back up with, with roaring inflation. And how, good luck to whoever this. the president is because they're going to take the blame for it. Yeah, the Dow's down on that news, on Jay Powell's news, right? There, it's down now. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, he's going to wait 90 more days. What are we going to do? Uh, what's going to happen here? And let's not forget an overwhelming supply, an overwhelming supply of U.S. debt coming at the same time that overwhelming supply of delinquent office space all of that's coming jason in the next six months man well next six months next six months and i uh we've been i've been talking june i, I you know we, we talked uh, yesterday and then a little bit today of 2700 gold to 3100 gold you know, I think the 2,700 gold, you know, usually in the summertime, Joe, you've always told me, and I haven't watched it as, as many years as you have, but uh, usually summer kind of cools off and, and you know, there's you know there's, there's less emergency in the news cycle. And people are looking at vacations of fun times, but that might not be this summer. And I, I see June and even into July as gold could be very strong, may cool off. I'll say this, just before the election or even just after the election, I could see gold cooling off. I could see gold running in june and, and maybe in july and i could see gold kind of cool off for a month or two even come down some then sometime after the election joe we get to a, a late december mid to late december and i think gold just tears up and just and then 2025 is an entire year of gold going up joe yeah i'm i'm, I'm just i'm just looking at this here and part of the problem for us and the fed uh, with all of the debt that needs to be sold it's going to be extremely difficult to keep rates down. They, they may c cut a quarter of a point, and the 10-year note doesn't go down, right? Because there's just an overwhelming supply of, of debt out there. And now if the banks are going to start feeling the effects here of, of okay, wait a minute, the retailers are slowing down, now, now we got – bankruptcies flying in our face the consumers taking a step back now we got all these loans to deal with uh, it really could put us in a spot where even with a rate cut it may not help right i mean that's that's a very likely scenario Patriot radio news hour we got a red i just got handed something by Brittany. a red hot special coming up next
800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour here on this ter- Tuesday. Copper's up almost 25 cents right now. Holy smokes. That, that's just crazy. Over $5 a pound uh, right now in New York. Uh, amazing. Silver's up 30 plus cents. Gold's up 15. Uh, the Dow is down 7. I don't know that we can get a bad number tomorrow. You know, if it comes in lower, like they said, that you know, this year-over-year thing would shelter, I think gold goes up, right? Silver goes up. Look at today. PPI came in red hot. Gold and silver are flying. I, I don't know. I don't know that uh, any number is going to make a big difference tomorrow but but i will say i will say this you rather buy sooner than later because uh when we start looking at what is happening this is just it's an easy thing to see inventories are stretched they're thin there's huge buying people are trying to get out of fiat and, and it's not just the dollar right I don't want to be in the yen. I don't want to be in the euro. I don't want to be in the renembi. They're trying to diversify as much as they possibly can. And that's exactly what we've been telling you you're going to have to do. Today's special, and it's a good one. Uh, We've got 145 $5 Indians. 1 through 19 at 690 that is the same price as the $5 liberties if you buy 20 or more $685 and, and I'll just say this uh, we're probably going to be seeing you know five $5 Indians $5 liberties uh, you're going to see prices well into the $700 range as early as tomorrow. Uh, there, there's a big move now in the higher grades, AUs, XFs, VS, right? They're all moving higher. Uh, Jason, the, the supply is, it, it's, the, it's the problem everywhere. Yeah, it, uh, it's May 14th today, and, and, and uh, gold's been holding in this $2,300 range from the low 2300s to the upper 2300s. Uh, and we moved here very quickly from uh, late February uh, into early April. So uh, I think it really is very possible in June, if we break past 2400 and it, and it st- stays a day or two above 2400 we could start seeing $100 a week move for a couple more weeks, and suddenly you're looking at – Twenty six hundred dollar spot price, and to be looking at twenty nine hundred dollar gold, Joe, and it can happen yeah. in just a few weeks from now. I mean, it's it's very possible. These this is not just gold and silver. This is a commodities rally. You know, we're, Joe doesn't like to talk about copper because it's, it's it is a a base metal. It's it's an industrial metal, but it's moving. It's moving at, at quite a rate. I and mean, when you find copper, what do you find? You find silver, right, Joe? And if if copper's going up, they're having trouble getting enough copper to those that need it silver to having trouble to getting it to those who need it and monetarily gold is just desired by all these central banks in these countries now this is a commodities driven and and what if it's a commodities driven rally that just means one thing the dollar is weaker and weaker and you're buying less of these commodities it's not a rally it's the dollar crashing the ounce of gold and the ounce of copper and the ounce of silver is the same uh, we're going to see gold gonna, go way I'm higher, gonna Joe. Just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really paint a great, easy picture for you. Right now, the dollar is the strongest thing out there. I know. And look at what gold and silver and copper and tin and aluminum and, 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 and are doing. And everybody, even Jay Powell, what did he say today? Oh, no, 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 no. We're not raising rates anymore. Right? It's all about when can we start cutting rates? When can the dollar start weakening? That's when you're really, like I said, I always, this isn't the, you know when the big move is? 
when the Fed has to start chopping, and I'm not talking about 25 basis points, we're talking about 50 basis points and, and more, that's when you're going to see the big moves. That's when this is, is going to occur. And, and Jason, you're right. I really thought, you know, when we said this, we said this back in April. Hey, listen, June, we're telling you June. And it's early. I thought we were going to get at least another couple of weeks of consolidation. It doesn't look this way. Uh, you start looking at, you know, what Goldman said yesterday about gold inventories. And, hey, uh, nobody's telling us who's buying it, right? And there's a huge discrepancy. Look at what's going on with copper, silver, a massive. Or yesterday, what did I tell you about platinum? All of these metals, every 90 days, all as they say is, oh, wait a minute, the shortage is going to be worse. The shortage is going to be worse. The shortage is going to be worse. And it's driving these prices, and it's doing it with, quote, unquote, a strong dollar, Jason. That, that's the really impressive part. And I'll just keep going back to Janet Yellen, you know, dropping by China there and what, what was actually said. I mean, it. What actually, because she's the Treasury Secretary. Technically, her job is, is the dollar, right? What, what, was she asking China for something? Was she, was she asking them to do something? Was she asking them for information? What are you going to do? Was she requesting something? Was it a combination of these things? And then she's going to take whatever information she gained from that, and what is she doing? I mean, are, are they trying to, to, to hold these markets? You know, hey, China's going to do this. They don't care what we want. Can, can we manipulate these, these, these commodity contracts to be less severe than they really are? Because, Joe, for all we know, they're monkeying around with these prices. It could be much worse. The inflation could be much worse. And Janet Yellen is just trying to figure out, well, how do we, how do we get us uh, another six months before the, the dam breaks, right, Joe? I, I think it, that's exactly what they were trying to figure out. Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. Get those $5 Indians while you still can. We'll be right back. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour on this Tuesday. Tomorrow, the CPI number. What's it going to be? Right? They're, they're praying beyond hope that they can somehow get a low year over year. You know, I'll be more concerned about the month over month, to be honest with you. Right? That's going to be indicative. And if the, what the producer prices said today, right, I, I can't imagine the month over month number being under. The only thing they, they can hope for is the funny math allowed them to say the year-over-year year number got a little lower. I think that's kind of what they're banking on. Uh, I think I think we're going to see higher prices tomorrow. We'll see. We don't know, right? If I guess if I knew for certain, I wouldn't be sitting here doing this show anymore, right? I'd be I'd be sipping my ties on a beach somewhere. Uh, man, I'm just watching copper. Man, copper's just blowing me away right now. Up up thirty cents. Holy smokes. Uh, that's another, you know what? They're not supposed to do this kind of stuff. They're not supposed to move like this. And how, how soon to Jason's point, do we wake up one day? Oops. We got a little delivery problem. Yeah. Yeah. We got a little delivery problem in silver. We got a little delivery problem in gold. And you see, silver go up five dollars in a day you, you see gold go up a hundred or two hundred dollars in a day i i think that's that's kind of what they, they've got they've got to get the prices high enough to where that doesn't happen and i think that's the biggest problem right now five dollar indians under seven hundred dollars get them well you can't because i'm going to say this right now we are you know could we see a thousand dollars on a $5 Indian before the year is out, it's not only is it possible, it's probably probably going to be pretty close. That'd be my guess. Probably going to be pretty close because I think we're going to see gold over 3000 uh, So here at 690 the same price is a $5 Liberty. By the way, you buy 20 or more, $685 at 800 951 
0592. And, you know, Jay Powell said it. Hey, we're not going to raise rates anymore, but we need another quarter before we can see if we can lower the rate, Jason. We'll see what happens. I, I think the uh, CPI year-over-year year number is going to be maybe the same or a little lower tomorrow. But I'm going to tell you right now, the CP, the year-over-year year CPI for May and June, because I always look at the multi-year chart, Joe, the year-over-year the, the year CPI for May, for May and June are going to be much higher, much higher, just based off the – because I, I watched the year-over-year, year and then we had significant large drops the previous year. And for whatever reason – it all stays balanced. They really have kind of a, a a control over what it is. So I think, yeah, we get 3.3 tomorrow, maybe 3.2 at the best if they're lucky. And then watch out for the year-over-year -year numbers for May and June, which were significant drops last year, which got us down to the threes. We've been in the threes since, you know, j uh, June of last year, Joe. You know, right. we, 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 they're not getting it any better. And if they're not getting any better, it's, it, I think they want this, right? They've had a year to get it below the threes. They don't want to do that. So I think we have this sideways number tomorrow, maybe a little lower. And then you watch. You watch it go into the – I bet we get into the fours by, by May or June, the year-over-year year number. And, and what, what, what do they do then? Yeah, it's going to be hard to do a rate reduction if it goes back to the fours, right? 800-951-0592. I just had someone text in ammo prices. Yeah. Boy, they probably hate that move in copper, right? It's, uh, yeah, everything's getting more expensive. You name it. Pizza Radio News Hour. Jason and I wrapping it up. Hey, we're going to come right back with the half-empty cup. Stay with us.